So I will uh, briefly present uh, what, uh, what was the knowledge transfer program that uh, was co-developed and implemented in the Shiroko Exchange project. Uh, it will be a first uh, insight because then in the session afterward you will uh, look into the details uh, in the implementation uh, across all the, all the regions of the project. So I will try to be short. Um, so the knowledge transfer program is uh, uh, the program that uh, we could develop for uh, the exchange of knowledge and practice practices uh, uh, among the nine uh, regional and national authorities that participate in the Shiroko Exchange, uh, with the aim of uh, supporting uh, yes their uh, adoption or progress uh, in, uh, in integrated care. The object objective was twofold. On one hand, uh, the program itself was uh, had the objective of designing uh, a bottom-up and personalized assistance uh, and practical support that was tailored to the local needs of the regional and national healthcare authorities that participate in the project, preparing the ground for uh, for their transition or progress, uh, or to improve their their uh, system design and service design. At the same time, the other objectives wo objective was also to facilitate uh, this uh, specifically uh, design uh, knowledge transfer program uh, in the regions and among the regions uh, to prepare the local environment uh, for uh, for the adoption and uh, or or up, um, upscale of integrated care in, in the system. The knowledge transfer program uh, moves uh, also from this uh, evidence-based capacity building support approach uh, and uh, moves from the, uh, the previously implemented uh, self-assessment of the, of the maturity of, uh, of the healthcare system in integrated care. So these results uh, were used to inform uh, the knowledge transfer program uh, and specifically to identify what dimension of integrated care each region or national healthcare authority wish to strengthen, uh, but also to identify uh, what were the dimensions where the regions were particularly uh, advanced and could share uh, knowledge and, uh, and practices. Of course, like the, 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 the actors uh, were, uh, yes, had the two main roles. So on one hand, there was uh, a transferring region usually, which was indeed the partner uh, which recorded progress uh, in that specific uh, dimension and had uh, valuable knowledge and know-how to, to share. And uh, on the other hand, there was a rec receiving region, which was on the other hand, the region that was ready to, to implement this uh, this process towards uh, integrated care, and both sides worked uh, very much close with their uh, <coughs> local stakeholder and healthcare professionals. It was a bidirectional exchange because, um, more or less, each partner uh, learned on one hand, but also transferred on the other hand. The, what was particularly important uh, and what the, was the first objective of the of the knowledge transfer program was indeed the co-development of uh, of the of the knowledge transfer programs. As uh, Andrea mentioned before, the programs were really really tailored to each region and uh, uh, different. So each program differed considerably, and also then the activities themselves. So we uh, we spent a lot of time and. Uh, effort in uh, in the initial part where we co-developed with each partner uh, their, 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 their program. This process started with the selection of the dimension uh, each region wanted to focus on for uh, in the knowledge transfer. And as we said before, this was informed by the results from the maturity assessment, but also other considerations in relation to the specific local context, uh, the commitment, the conditions of the partner. From this, uh, each partner had then to identify the specific objectives and the needs uh, to be addressed through the process, to the knowledge transfer process. And, uh, and also, yeah, also this one was a moment where we, we spent a lot, of, a lot of time in reflecting concretely what were the needs and, um, and objectives. So we had the regular bilateral meetings with partners who also were in touch with local stakeholders. And from there, we moved to the identification of, of what were the relevant stakeholders to involve, so who could benefit from this uh, new, new knowledge and practice to then 
bring it in the, in the local context and local system. And from there, we, we, we identified uh, what specific assets, uh, so yes, the assets we, we saw before in the Knowledge Management Hub, which one uh, could be uh, used uh, in the knowledge transfer, so transferred from one region to another. And then, uh, yes, there was a reflection also on the knowledge transfer activity. So we, we put a lot of effort also in identifying the effective knowledge transfer activities. Uh, and for this uh, purpose, the, um, each partner were provided with a sort of menu of activities, uh, which uh, uh, are, ca uh, are ca categorized, categorized, classified in five main categories. Uh, so expert mission to receiving region, okay. events uh, in receiving region or other relevant places, capacity, capacity building activities in uh, receiving region or elsewhere that relevant, study visit in the transfer region or entity, and uh, then exchange of second element or placement of staff. Uh, and uh, each, uh, each category was, uh, was provided with a clear explanation of uh, what, uh, what uh, need uh, uh, that specific activity would better uh, reply to, respond to, examples of con concrete implementation than the yes, practice. Yes, okay, so yes. Uh, but, uh, and so after, after uh, the, the selection of the activity, there was the concrete then organization of the knowledge transfer activity, the implementation, and then the evaluation. As, uh, as, was, uh, as uh, Andrea anticipated it before, uh, um, we had some major constraints as uh, everyone. But uh, let's say that, uh, yes, the knowledge transfer programs was, uh, was running in uh, full concomitance with, uh, with the pandemic. So a lot of what we, were, we planned initially had to be adapted to an, a new context, uh, also new challenges and commitments in the healthcare sector. So what we did was a continuous and regular assessment with each partner to see whether the pandemic brought about uh, relevant changes uh, in relation to the objectives, the stakeholders to be involved, the ambition itself of the knowledge transfer and the activities, and also indeed uh, whether activities that were initially planned could be organized nonetheless. What uh, was uh, interesting was that uh, the needs and objectives that were uh, identified, identified and specified at the beginning were uh, actually reaffirmed in the pandemic, also showing uh, that like the, um, the time allocated and the importance allocated to this initial task at the beginning was, uh, yes, was, was valuable in that regard because it, uh, it stays that the relevant state also afterwards. Uh, but then we had uh, to, of course, adapt the, the knowledge transfer activities to an online format, also experimenting with this uh, new typology of format. And, uh, and to, the, to this aim, we decided to adopt what was a small step approach. So also limiting a bit what were the initial ambitions, but to move to uh, smaller steps that could actually uh, be more easy to organize in, the, in that context, but still provide uh, value for, uh, for the activity itself. Sorry. So, uh, yes, you know, eventually it actually it was a good approach, so we can say that now. And uh, the only, what eventually was developed, yes, were a series of knowledge transfer activities that could actually fit uh, the same five categories that were initially identified to take place on site. So we had the online workshops uh, which worked uh, as study visits for, uh, to show up practice and receive feedbacks. So for example, partners shared their work, uh, alert, yeah, the learning region shared their work with the consortium to, to receive additional feedbacks and guidance on, uh, on that specific work. Uh, we had the online peer learning activities uh, that were tailored to the local needs of the region uh, that was uh, yes, the, acting as a learning partner that worked as a study visit uh, to learn more about a specific practice. And uh, yes, in that case, uh, we, had, we put a lot of uh, 
emphasis on the preparation of these uh, yeah. peer learning activities uh, to, to ensure their effectiveness also online. So this included preparatory meeting uh, before between the learning and the coaching partner, uh, the joint revision and preparation of the, of the agenda of the, of the exchange. Uh, and uh, and this, uh, these activities showed particularly effective for uh, exchange of information, mutual learning, but also in view of building up a uh, uh, sustainable uh, long-term professional relationship and collaboration that can continue in the future. Then we had uh, enlarged the light webinar, so which, uh, yes, will function as conferences and other specialized events in the receiving region. So these uh, events were particularly relevant to provide opportunities for stakeholder engagement, for experience sharing, uh, and the production of collective intelligence, <laughs> and also to raise awareness and build uh, the international community. And finally, uh, in some other cases, uh, some regions and national healthcare authorities uh, decided to rather <laughs> focus more on uh, capacity building and awareness raising uh, activities within their own regional ecosystems. So for example, we had uh, a certified master program uh, in Puglia, a training uh, in Lithuania, uh, awareness raising uh, website uh, in Slovakia, and uh, a survey uh, on the needs uh, of healthcare and patients, healthcare professionals and patients in Poland. So yes. As, as I said uh, before, uh, the, the experience was, was positive, uh, despite the, the constraints. Uh, we were very happy with, uh, with the implementation of the knowledge transfer, and uh, also it turned about into new opportunities uh, for actually learning uh, how to best use this, uh, this methodology also online. And a um, few elements that we identified as success factors for uh, this outcome was for uh, as mentioned before, this strong focus that we initially put on the specification of needs, the fact that the activities were really, really tailor-made with a clear intention and yeah, based on local, on the local context and local needs, that there was always in mind to keep, to bring a clear value to stakeholders, to the local stakeholders. So, what were their needs were was always taken into, into consideration. The peer learning dimension that was particularly strong, um, the re uh, regular and continuous assessment uh, that was uh, implemented once the uh, pandemic uh, started, the early stage adoption of this small scale approach, uh, and uh, the fact that uh, especially once we moved online, there was really, really considerable preparatory work that anticipated uh, the knowledge transfer activities and the online knowledge transfer activities, uh, that we also were open in uh, building up on the new opportunities that the online format provided, for example, having uh, additional participants that uh, would not always uh, attend uh, an on-site activity uh, or the translation of new services. Uh, and then uh, was the, the main point, uh, Joanna will for sure say more about this after, was uh, the strong connection in, uh, like within, uh, within the consortium which allowed to, indeed, to, to progress and, uh, and support each other throughout this, uh, this process. And yes, so I, th th this was the in brief, in brief the experience. So we will uh, soon share with the partners and other professionals uh, some uh, resources uh, that can support you uh, in, uh, in developing knowledge transfer programs uh, uh, also after the project. Uh, so we will uh, share the, the comprehensive report on the 